Design a fake news detection system. Okay, sounds good. So um, I'm going to just talk about a little bit about my assumptions about this system. I will assume that I will, uh, we will be designing a fake news detection system for social media because increasingly news are read mostly through social networks. Um, mm. Although some of the components of the system I'm going to talk about are applicable to pure text applications that don't have any social network information. I will also assume that we have access to information about the social network. So users, user follower accounts, how the information flows through the network, like posts, timing of the posts, et cetera, et cetera. So I will share my screen and show you a diagram of the fake news detection system. Um, so um, we're going to have a few modules in this, um, in this fake news detection si system. We are going to assume that we have an incoming media post. This is going to be our input and our output is going to be whether it's fake or real. And there's going to be obviously some action taken depending on that. Uh, in the beginning, we want to uh, classify whether this is news or not news, because if we uh, stick a label of fake on a, someone's opinion, we might have some <laughs> problems arising from that. So yeah. we will <laughs> we will have uh, some attributes that come with together with the social media post. So basically we determined whether it's not news, uh, then whether it has a URL or not URL. And then we have the user characteristics. So maybe number of followers, connections, other posts, etc. And then we will have three different modules uh, where this uh, social media post will go into. Uh, the first one is a text analysis module. Uh, the second one will analyze the URL if it exists. And the third one will analyze the movement of the post through the network. Um, so the text analysis module uh, will do two things. It will uh, have a model a model for analyzing just the text and there are some features that might give out a fake news uh post for example it might have it might be very subjective it might have a lot of question marks um, some quantifiers uh, generalizations um and that kind of analysis is good but it, uh, it's probably not very reliable because as we know even people are very bad at determining whether a news piece is uh, fake or real. So the, the machine probably will not be either. So to support that, we will have another uh, part of this module where we represent each fact as a, an RDF triple. So this is just saying, for instance, we have a sentence, uh, John saw the cat. So we represent that as a triple where the subject is John, the predicate is saw, and the object is the cat. And we take more, more complex sentences and we'll represent each pairing of subject and object uh, with the predicate, predicate as a triple. And then uh, basically for this one to work, we need an outside knowledge base, such a, as a DBpedia, because then we match these facts to DBpedia. And then, um, uh, recent research has found that the more concrete those uh, entities and those facts and those triples are, uh, the better the chance that the news piece is real. Because if it's very general, then it's easy to go either way. You, you can, you know, be talking about something very confidently, but it's just, you know, just talk. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so combining these two things, and there are different options for combining these, right? We could train um, two different models, one for the text alone, one for the facts of triples. We could combine the two and, you know, use embeddings and concatenate, for example, the embeddings. And then, or we could have a voting system. There are many different options for this. Uh, and if I... Would, if I did voting, I would put less less weight on the text only and more weight on the fact as triples analysis because it's also supported by an outside source that we know is verified. Got it. So this will output whether fake or real. So 
um, and then we we will have some confidence um, uh, marker. And if it's high confidence, then probably we will want to take immediate action if it's definitely a fake news item. Um, but if it's low confidence, then we will defer to uh, th our third module, which I'll talk about uh, later. So the second um, module will take the URL. It will take uh, the URL, it will read the URL, and then it will take the title of the text and the text itself. And also the see... URL, is this a URL of the actual post itself or is this a URL contained within the post? Yeah, sorry, I, need, I should have been more clear. It's the URL of that's contained in the post. Got it. Okay. So we take that uh, the supporting URL right for the for the social media post, and then mm -hmm. we take the title and we take the text. And again, recent research has found that if the title and the text agree, then it's more likely to be a real news item. But if they don't agree, then probably it's uh either fake or uh misleading it's like clickbait you know the because the headline can say one thing but the actual text is not saying that so mm -hmm. so that's uh called stance detection and then we will do that using this uh module and then we will do the same thing um and i am actually thinking that probably these three so text uh just text faxes ripples and url uh could be combined into one um, module that will say whether it's fake or real. Okay. So if it's high confidence, take action. If it's low confidence, we go on to the network analysis module. And why- Quick question. Yes. So you mentioned that these two could be combined into one. Are there any advantages to separating them into two separate modules? Uh, yes, because some posts will not contain a URL. So, ah, that's fair. Okay. Uh, but we can, you know, um, there are probably ways around that. So, uh, but yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, and the reason why we have the network analysis module that's kind of to the side and we only use it um, with low confidence scores is because it can only work if it's delayed in time because it is analyzing the movement of the post through the network. Uh, basically, um, how the users are posting, which use which users are posting, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so about in the recent research uh, that I read, it said about two hours uh, is the time that needs to pass before uh, this module can work correctly and identify uh, whether the item is real or fake. And uh, we will need a, a, a model here as well uh, that uh, takes in apart from the actual post um, and the user information of the mm, post who uh, the user who posted the uh, the item, we need the representation of the social network as a graph database. And okay. obviously, we will need to partition it because <laughs> we cannot probably put in the whole thing in there. Yeah. Um, and it, what are yeah? If you're if you're touching on this, I apologize. What are some of the characteristics that a fake news post would de demonstrate in its movement in the network versus real news? Um, so I think it might be um, different which users are posting it and how quickly it's appearing through the network. Um, some because some some people might be uh copy pasting you know if it's like robots uh it's moving very fast that it might be mm -hmm. not real people who are disseminating it for example mm -hmm. okay so that's one characteristic for example yeah so um here um i think if we take all the combination of all these and it says it's fake then we have a lot more confidence that it's really fake so take some action uh, based on, on this output. Okay. Um, so the two external data sources that we will need are the knowledge base um, mm -hmm. that is put in for the facts analysis and the representation of the social network. And we will need uh, machine learning models. Um, oh, yeah. And I, these 
two will need to be updated frequently as you know the facts change quickly and then social yeah. network changes so and how frequently that will need to be decided you know depending on the business requirements i would say daily but maybe even more frequent than that i don't know okay that's uh, fair yeah and then uh, these will require machine learning models and uh, to train such machine, run machine learning models, we will obviously need some training data. And there are um, the data sets out there that are available uh, for training. Uh, for instance, there is the LIAR data set that's about 13,000 short statements, uh, which is uh, fake or, or real, just text. And then there is also FNC1 which is uh, about 75,000 labeled headlines and articles. So this would be for the stance right. detection, the correspondence right. between uh, headline and document. Right. Uh, yeah, and then once this system, we put it into production, we will definitely need to have uh, some uh, quality assurance that it's working as expected. And I'm expecting that we would need to do daily checks of uh, all three models or four depending on how you count here um daily checks on all three models to evaluate whether they're whether they're actually doing their jobs and how accurately they're giving us the answers yes correct. or how often they're giving us the right answer rather okay. uh yeah just measuring you know precision and recall and and those metrics will also depend um like which which uh, metrics we optimize for will depend whether uh, this system is completely automated or if there is a human in the loop, right? Um, if uh, yeah. there's a human in the loop, we can have high recall and precision can be a little less because we want to cover all the cases and the human can hopefully sort through the rest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. And what, what do you do in the situations where let's say you get a lot of false positives um, for fake news? Um, what what is the approach in this system to be able to deal with sorting those false positives ultimately um well i think um the first thing is to uh do some error analysis just to figure out what happened why why are we ha having so many false positives uh mm -hmm. maybe people are talking about this one particular t topic that's uh being labeled as false positive and then we need to update the model somehow to make sure that they are not going through um as fake when they're actually real got it okay i'm interested in um in your perspective on if you were approaching this from the bad actor standpoint what are some ways that someone could break this system or take advantage of it oh uh, interesting um uh, i guess that's a good way to make sure that it actually works um well i think uh, a lot of social media users, they figure out very quickly um, how the algorithm works and mm -hmm. they try to game the system. I mean, even I know on LinkedIn, if you post a post uh, with a link, it will never reach any kind of viewership. There's, it's going to be very low. So people post links in the comments. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, people figure out, oh, the, the URLs are not going through. I'm just going to put it in the comments. Uh, and... Yeah, uh, this is something that's kind of a cat and mouse game where mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we try to build a system that will protect us from bad actors and the bad actors figure it out. Now we have to go back and do something else. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. This is a great start to uh, to building this kind of system. Thank you so much, Jenya. I'm wondering, um, do you have any thoughts on if someone encounters a question like this in the wild, what are your suggestions for how to approach it? Because it's a pretty broad question and you could go in so many different directions for it. So what are your what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think when you think of any kind of um, project like this where there is NLP or machine learning involved, think about um, the business requirements and how they translate into what you need to do and how you find the training data whether the training data will correspond to what's out there because the for instance the data sets that are public they go stale very quickly they might be very curated while your data is going to be wildly different so mm -hmm. uh 
you you're you know so maybe a data set that's out there is good for a proof of value but then you will need to collect your own how are you going to collect your own data um and then after you make the models and they seem to work how are you going to monitor them and make sure that they don't fail on you uh especially silently <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> lovely thank you so much Denia. um any final thank thoughts you. before we wrap up um Thank you. I enjoyed uh, answering the question and hope you enjoyed watching it. Yeah, absolutely. I learned something during this. So this is, it's not my area of expertise, but I really enjoyed um, learning about yeah how you would build a system like this for a very, very tough and pertinent problem today. So thank you so much. And I hope this is valuable for everyone at home. Good luck with your interviews. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.